Columbus Caribbean waters and you need to come down to the Wrestling Guys store for all your wrestling merchandise needs. We have action figures, we have t-shirts, we have the ceiling of fame. You gotta see it for yourself. Come down here. Memphis Wrestling is back! Featuring Alan Steele, Derek King, The Posse, Superstar Bill Dundee, King Cobra, and more. Championship Wrestling from Memphis! Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is part two of Circle Debate, episode 40. Part two of it. I'm glad you guys enjoyed part one. Yes, we had a lot of talk about on part one, and you saw, man, it was just... We're, ex we're just excited to be pro wrestling fans as of today. So much excitement, so much, you know, it's just so much tenure, so much, oh, I just, I, I'm, out, I'm out of words, you know. <laughs> but, yes, let's move on to part two now, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, I want to go ahead and move on with pro wrestling Sydney news. So speaking of, um, you know, New Japan, what we're talking about in part one, part two, New Japan did sign a deal with Roku TV, with Roku now beginning next Thursday. Which says next Thursday they will be now with, on a weekly show on, excuse me, on Roku TV, and I'm happy for them because now they're getting more exposure. They got dropped down by Access TV. They decided to run with with Wow, and now you know they have Impact now. Uh, now they have Roku. I'm really happy. I have Roku TV, so I'm okay. I'm, I'm able to see it. I'm able to go ahead and see New Japan, but I got other, you know, other ways to see New Japan. Um, also, want to give you know con uh, kudos, congratulations to the Independent Wrestling Net uh, TV. They also signed a deal with Pluto TV. Now they're able to go ahead and they who doesn't know who is IWTV, their Independent Wrestling Television Network. They distribute independent wrestling shows like Defy or like you know Beyond Wrestling, uh, you know WWR Women's Wrestling, you know Revolution. So much content that they provide. Now you'll be able to watch it now on Pluto TV. You're able to watch that. Defy also PCW, you know, that here from California. You're able to see their, you know, their TV tapings that they had pre, you know, before the whole pandemic. They're, out, they're also signed with Pluto TV. So you might want to go ahead and, you know, tune into that. I'm loving the fact that independent professional wrestling is getting reckon, its recognition where it's supposed to be because. You know, a lot of these talents that we're seeing now on national television wasn't, you know, it couldn't, it wasn't for these independent promotions that exposed them. And I'm kind of glad that they're getting that opportunity. And also make sure you guys tune in for MLW, which I'm going to be tuning in because, and also next week I wanted to mention as well, we are going to have, next week we're going to have our brother, uh, that is uh, George McKay from Straight Talk Wrestling joining us. He, if you, if you, you know, you watch this, George. You know what's going on, brother. Much love to you. Shout out to you. Hello, George. Uh, I just want to go ahead and say that you should watch his pro, his pro wrestling channel. He has great content, great, wonderful interviews, and of course, his daughter, the queen, of the podcast. She does a phenomenal work asking her five questions. I love it. Uh, we will, and we will be having him next week. But yes, and he does cover MLW as well. Uh, so next week, MLW's main event that I'm like excited to see, uh, Laredo Kid. Versus Leo Rush, title versus title. You have the AAA Cruiserweight title and the MOW Middleweight Championship. Winner takes all. So this is another cross promotion that we're seeing that I'm excited to see. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And Leo Rush and Laredo Kid. And I mean, we did see Laredo versus Kenny Omega in mm -hmm. you know the last one in Triple Mania. Uh, Mike was impressed with little Laredo Kid. I'm, and Laredo Kid's a main eventer. He, just letting everybody know. Yes, he's a main eventer. He's a phenomenal. He's a, a great, incredible worker in and out of the ring. I can't wait to see this match. And it's free on YouTube, so you can watch it on YouTube uh, on the on their network on the channel of MLW. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. We'll give our. You also remember him from AEW Fighter Fest. Yes, yes, sir. You got it right. Definitely. Uh, so now I want to go ahead and move on for this. Um, well, we did mention about Lars Sullivan getting you know, released. No future endeavors. I feel sorry for them for the individual. Yeah, I, that's all I can really say. I mean, it just his past caught up to him, and it kind of ruined his career. It is an unfortunate. Uh, I don't know, gentlemen. Do you guys have thoughts about Lars, Lars Sullivan, Mike? You, how do you feel about that? I um, I know that they wanted to push him. 
mm-hmm. he has a, a win over Jeff Hardy, which is, you know, not something to take lightly. Yeah. Uh, you know, they were pushing him. They, they wanted him to be something. Uh, and, you know, the like, like Ivan said, the past caught up to him. Uh, past decisions that he made. Um, you know, and it's unfortunately, it's unfortunate for the individual, for the person, right? Yeah. Uh, it sucks. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're going in a, we're in a time right now where, you know, you have to kind of watch what you say. You have to be careful. You have to be a little bit more considerate to different people. You know, you, it, 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 you know, there's things about it, uh, and, uh, that could be a, an entire podcast in and of itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, in the end, you you gotta be, uh, you gotta think about people and and know that anything you can say might affect somebody, uh, or anything you do might affect somebody in in any kind of way. So be careful, uh, you know. And that's all. That's the lesson here. That's right. Definitely, I agree a hundred percent. You feel the same way, right, Matt? You feel the same way. I gotta say, everybody, when when you Google Lars Sullivan, make sure you have your safety fi- filters on. Just <laughs> just letting you know on your just just make sure you have them on. Like if your kid is 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 Googling him and like, ooh, who's the wrestler Lars Sullivan? Make sure make sure you have your filters on. Hey, yeah, yeah, have your filters on. <laughs> have your parental controls on for your kids. Parental controls. Definitely. Yeah. You don't. You do want to have that on. Yeah. Another one that caught us off guard was uh, Steve Cutler was released as well. You know, he was one part of the Baron Corbin ones, and Steve Cutler was also the Forgotten Sons as well. Well, uh, it, it's just that shocked me out of nowhere. Uh, that released, damn, it, it sucks. You know, he was there since 2014, so throughout the NXT days, and it's an unfortunate with him too. And uh, well, I hope I wish Steve for the best future for him, and I think we are going to see him very soon. Yeah, uh, any other independent promotions, and he's not a. He's a he's not a bad one. He's great, a great in ring worker. He's just underrated. Some, some people he, shine better outside of WWE. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. Christian. I mean, we were just talking about Christian earlier. He get, yeah. it's the. I think I. I wonder if it should be called the Christian effect or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it should be. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. But let's move on now to New Japan. I know we spoke about New Japan earlier in part one, ladies and gentlemen, but I want Everything's more, connecting now. But it is connecting. Uh, I just want to speak about like what history was made that Tanahashi defeated Shingo Takagi for the Never Open Weight Championship. That was a fucking 10 beers match for me. The story itself in the ring, the psychology was just amazing. And I really, I'm telling Money Mike team to see this match and you'll, you'll fall in love with the match. Uh, Tanahashi making the history on um, his first run as a never open weight champion. And um, I cannot wait to see what the future holds. And now that belt is being now more prestigious of what Matt and I had discussed in prior before episodes with the archives, ladies and gentlemen. And those, I, I'm looking forward to what, they, what uh, Tanahashi is going to do with that belt. How, do you feel the same way, Mr. Steamboat? How do you feel about that? That belt, since Tanahashi is holding it a seven, no, eight time IWGP world heavyweight champion i think that belt needs a redesign though it's a it, it's a oh, oh it's an okay design right now but if you have somebody like tanahashi holding it you need something like you need like a crown on it and an eagle and you know i even drew up a belt design the other night that i might show you guys it's not here it's upstairs but <laughs> i'll show it to you guys later after this but you know let me let me. If Mike isn't familiar with the never open weight belt design, I'm gonna pull pull it up right here, right behind me. The never open weight title right here, and for somebody like Tanahashi, yeah, for somebody cool. like Tanahashi, it needs to even look more prestigious than that. I think they should make it a little bit more bigger, like the I- IWGP belt, like mm-hmm. make it a little bit more bigger. The and Intercontinental can... belt's big. The yeah. US belt is big, so. There was before they united the Intercontinental with the with the heavyweight title. There was four different. You got four different. Sing, no, five different single championships to compete for, yeah. in AEW, junior heavyweight, never open weight, U.S. Intercontinental, and world in the world heavyweight championship. Five. I, I love it, man. I mean, this guy has been history. You know, him being a lot of, being there for a long time in New Japan is making history in the making. Uh, I, it's, it's an unfortunate, even though I, I love LIJ, you know, like Shingo is part of it, LIJ. 
But, you know, it's an unfortunate. But I, I, I'd rather see it someone new. And I want to see more people challenge for that belt. And that's what I'm looking forward to see. Because that belt now is becoming, rev, you know, re, 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 ugh, see, I can't read Roma Arts. Re, relevant. Or relevant. Is that my saying it correctly? Relevant. Relevant. Thank you. I mean, yeah. Elevated, too. Elevated. So I wanted to say elevated. See, damn, this is what happens. Uh, but <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to that. And also, do not forget, ladies and gentlemen, as well, that February 10th and 11th is the pretty much is a new beginning of. Uh, he's a hero. What is it, Matt? I know that I forgot the name of the pay per view. I just literally forgot. Exactly. Oh, it's definitely it's just new be new beginning. It's new beginning. It's a two night event. Night one, you do have, uh, which is on uh, February the tenth. Uh, night one, you do have the Guerrillas of Destiny versus Zack Sombre Jr. and Tai Chi for the IWGP Tag Team Titles. You also have uh, the main event, which is the uh, Junior the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Title, as Hiromu Takakashi defending it versus Sho. Night two, you're going to have the main event, Kota Ibushi versus my boy, my boy Sonata for the IWGP heavyweight and intercontinental belt. Man, Mr. Steamboat, talk to me about it. what do you feel? What do you feel on this, these two night events? Are you excited? I'm, I'm excited. It's, it's you know, you, Ibushi and Sonata, they, you know, that's the, we're going to see where that goes, you know, because we... You, with it, with New Japan, they do things so differently. You can't really predict them as much. You could kind of, but not really. Like I'd say, maybe forty percent predictable. It's it's only like or thirty percent barely. What? So you you could only kind of tell, but not really. So you don't know what you're gonna get. You don't know who's gonna come out on top. And when yeah. you're surprised by it, you're not disappointed. No. You know, because they have a way of doing it. That where you know that they fought for it, that they earned it, that yeah. you know you're rewarded for all the moments you paid attention. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm okay. This is what I feel. I feel that well, someone's gonna go heel on this one. I think mm. it might be Sonata who might just go balls out heel and be like, he's frustrated that he cannot beat Ibushi and he's gonna get mad as hell and just go balls out and probably. Get Beats him after the match. I'm not saying a different I mean, style because Sonata is yeah. known for just grappling and being very like methodical about his matches. He's not he's not that much of a like a brawler, beat you no. up, go angry. You know, he's a very lock up, grapple and 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 flip and fly yeah. guy. Trained by the great Muda. Yeah. So I'm I mean, I'm looking forward to see what he's going to bring to the table for that match. I mean, we did love the match that he had in the finals of G1 with uh, Ibushi. But I feel that like this one is more important. The fact that he, because he's been to the top of the tip of the iceberg, and then he falls. And getting back up, he falls. I think I, if he does not win this one, which everybody's assuming that he's not, I think he's going to He gonna could go. surprise us. It's because, New Japan. Yeah, it could surprise us. Uh, but if he does not win, he's going to go heel, I think. And, I think and now, that that door, now that that portal's open, we don't know what we're going to see. Like That's the fact, true. so we don't know who's maybe think think of somebody on the AEW roster you haven't seen him seen in a while. Think of somebody in the Ring of Honor roster you haven't seen in a while. Think That's of somebody, th <laughs> think of somebody in AAA that you haven't seen in a while. It's like, wait a minute, why are they there? Yeah. Suddenly, somebody from the audience is sitting in the front row eating some popcorn, yeah. and you don't know <laughs> what's happening. I, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I'm, I don't know. Even with Show, Show and Hiromu is the same thing. Mm -hmm. I they're, think fr they're from two different factions. Yeah. Show's from Chaos, Hiromu's from LIJ. Uh, oh, and, and something we didn't mention. I don't know if you saw this tweet. Evil Uno put a tweet. We want Los Ingo Bernabes de Pon. That's what he, oh, that's what he oh tweeted. <laughs> that's what Evil yes, Uno tweeted. Baby. Give me that. I mean, Dark Order versus LIJ. Wow. Who knows? Like, Ooh, he, he no. tweeted... Now that that portal's open, we're going to see so many worlds are colliding. Evil Uno, like... Tranquilo, tranquilo, okay? Tranquilo. Evil Uno could be in Japan right now, waiting in the, like, chilling at a hotel lobby, you I, know? I, I, you never know, man. You could be with Johnny... Johnny Hungy. You could know, be with Johnny Hungy. Yeah, just out of nowhere against... Yeah, Johnny Hungy versus Hiromu. Like, there you go. Yeah, definitely. All right, so let's move on. We're now with the NXT, ladies and gentlemen. The last topic of the night. We'll go ahead and move it very quickly. Um, just by the way, which we finally figured out, the February 14th pay-per-view 
is Vengeance Day, not St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Is it just Damn Vengeance? It, was, no, Vengeance Day. Vengeance, Vengeance Day. They added a day on to it. Yeah, they <laughs> added a day. I kind of wish they would have called it. I mean, they should have done the same, you know, St. Valentine's Massacre, man. I, I was excited to know the pay-per-view name. But then when I found out, I'm like, what? What's up with that? You brought back, because you brought back, what was it? Oh, well, uh, In Your House, they brought back, you yeah. know, Great American Bash, Halloween Havoc, you know. This would have been a perfect setup to do it because they only had one pay-per-view to do it. I mean, right, Mike? They only had one, right? They never had no, no other one. And they could have done it, and it would have worked out perfect. But, you know, I guess, I mean, I'll live with it. So, you know, would have been cool. Would have been cool. Would have been cool, man. Would have been cool. Like Carlito. Carlito, yeah. Carlito. Speaking of Carlito, yeah. I, I, which I forgot to tell Chris Kennedy, which he's going to watch this part two. Uh, Carlito's not signed. He only just did a two-day thing. Uh, he did Royal Rumble and Raw. And so, the but it's the air. It's up in the air for him to come back or not. So, they're all depending on Papa Vinny to go ahead and actually decide if he wants him back. So, well, I'm hope, I hope so. Why not? He deserves to come back. And uh, he's, he was in great shape, and he I, he should have another run. Why not? But uh, I don't – I it's hard. Hey, you know what? He's in great shape. He eats crepes and is all – and doesn't vape, you know? Touche. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Walk with Elias Matt, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. That's what you have. Now, with the opening of NXT, we did see the women's – Semifinals of the Dusty Classic, we saw Dakota Kai, Raquel defeating Kaden Carter and Kathy Carziano. I was rooting for Kaden Carter and Kathy. I, I actually wanted them to go ahead because they were the underdogs. And I kind of wanted them to win. It is unfortunate they did not win. Uh, so now they so they lost to Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. So they moved on to the finals, waiting for the winner of next week, which is uh, Shotzi, Ember versus uh, Indy, and Candice LeRae. Money Mike. Do you agree? Do you feel like it should have been Kaden Carter and Katsy moving on to the finals? They were the underdogs, right? I mean, how did you feel about, you know, this this matchup? What, what were your thoughts? I, I'm always going to, or most most time, most of the time, I'm rooting for the underdogs. Um, excuse me. Um, yeah. Uh, Casey, uh, I'm a fan. I, I like her in-ring work. And uh, especially that move, right? The the, the backflip to the, the whatever oh, thing, uh, like a super phoenix splash. I don't know what it is. Yes, <laughs> I don't know yes, what it is. I, I haven't seen anybody in any roster do anything like that uh, so far, right? Uh, and uh, you know, very impressive. And you know, she's a former American Ninja Warrior, so she's you know she's able to do a lot of stuff uh, in the ring physically and all that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so yeah, I, I I wish she they would have continued, but it is what it is. I mean, and plus that was, that was her man. I mean, her man is Ricochet, so you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Steamboat, how did you feel about that one? <sighs> <laughs> I Just figured. Kidding. I figured. I figured. Expressions. Expressions. I love. Now let's move on. Was the Austin Theory versus Leon Rob? I think I enjoyed that match. Hey, I if people people who are not really familiar with Evolve, I recommend to be watching Evolve matches of Theory and Leon because they put on incredible matches. These two have a great rivalry in Evolve Pro Wrestling. I would re highly recommend to watch that. And this was not a bad match for me either. Yes, we did had in, in interference. I did like Leon busting the Eddie Guerrero, like, ah, ah, and then just leave Gargano <laughs> out. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Uh, so I'm going back to you, Money Mike. I mean, even though he did not pick up the win, but it was a, it was not a bad match. What do you, how did you feel about that? Yeah, um, it was cool. It was a good match. Austin Theory, I feel he has a bright future ahead of him. Um, he'll be fine, you know. Uh, yeah, not much to say there. You know, both both are good talents. I, I yeah. enjoy both. You know, so it's all good. Are you becoming a fan of Leon Ruff, or he still needs to get needs to get you like there? To say I'm a fan is a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Still, um, but he's he's growing on me. I guess you know. I I want to I want to see more. I want to see more from him. Yeah, I agree. And the same with Austin. I think 
to be honest, I thought what they were going to do with the Austin Theory. I thought they were going to, when he was with the with Seth Rollins, I I hate to say it, it did not work um, with Seth Rollins or even with Selena, maybe, but that didn't make no sense either to me. It just didn't make any sense. I think they pulled the trigger too soon on him. I'm not saying that he's not ready for the main roster, but I, which I am pretty much, he's not ready yet. Um, I think it's, uh, they pulled the trigger on him too quick. And it's an unfortunate that they, it's not like I said, well, how Chris said it, it's not a demotion, but I'm glad he's back in NXT, NXT. But I don't like this either faction either, to be honest. I don't like this Gargano faction. It's funny. For me, it's just funny. To a, it, am I going to take it serious? No. I don't like it. It makes it like, and for me, it's Gargano's too goofy. But I, yeah. don't get it wrong, I love his heel persona. It's just that I'm just not a fan of it. I'm trying to get involved, like, try to be intrigued, but it's too hard for me because you're making them theory and Indy Hardwell two great independent professional wrestlers a joke. And that's what pisses me off uh, as, a, as a, you know, as a fan of theirs because I do love their work. I think it should be to t- be taken a little bit more serious. And, but this is a joke for me. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of the faction. If it was more serious, then I would be a fan. But it's, you're making them look like a collateral damage for Gargano and Candice LeRae. I mean, I don't know. Do you, how do you feel about them, Mr. Steamboat? Do you, feel- Austin, Austin Theory is, you know, the former Evolve champion. And I kind of like seeing the whole, the, the Leon Ruff like coming up from, just being kind of like a, a new rookie, kind of a little bit of a no name, but <laughs> yeah. like 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 to the most audience. But they're really letting him come up, you know. Yeah. They're really they're they're really letting him rise. But yeah, Gargano, Gargano, I liked him. Even even I think back to when he was a baby face, you know, like it was it was like more of like a, a like a serious like underdog hero. And now it's kind of like an over the top. See, he went from o- under to over. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's over. He's a. I'm telling you, he's a great heel, and I love the fact that he's a North American champion because he's making that title like being known. And I'm glad because now he's having people like Destro Lumas looking at it. You know, you probably have gonna have uh, Bronson Reed look at it. You know, you we have Kushida now looking for. You know, his... I'll play the piano for Gargano. <laughs> You'll play the piano for Gargano, but you gotta be careful. <laughs> because he might go see I lost the word I had it I had it <laughs> Mate, don't you. change the channel on yeah, Gargano don't, not, yeah, don't change the channel on Gargano there yeah you, go. You, you may think it's a little bit goofy but don't change the channel on Gargano no. while you're playing the piano <laughs> I love it I love it <laughs> but I'm looking forward to see um, definitely um, next, which we'll discuss about next week the card of uh, TakeOver but yes, I'm glad that it's getting recognition or North American title with Loomis, uh, Kushida, Leon. Heck, you know, maybe Theory could get involved in that. Jake Atlas could get involved. There's a lot of potential stars that Gargano was able to make, could, could put over. Uh, I'm just looking forward to see what the outcome will be later on in the future. But moving on, I want to go ahead and move on to the Legado del Fantasma versus the Lucha Bros. Okay, I... I, I Come on, man. Who doesn't love Lucha Libre? I'm a big fan of it. I mean, I'm, you know, my heritage. Was it Lucha obviously. House Party? Yes, Lucha House Party. Yeah. But I was saying, like, I, I'm a hair. I like my culture is that as well. But I, I look at everything, you know. I'm not, not all, I'm an open book to everything. But, yes, yeah. my family, I originally, you know, grew up with Lucha Libre. But this match was not bad at all. It was actually great. I love both sides. And this is what I'm talking about. These are people, these four talents are very underrated and not given the opportunity to uh, be more you know exposed and be taken more serious and i'm glad this match proved that point and so i'm gonna ask you know your thoughts money mike how did you do you do you agree with that and do you feel like these four individuals deserves to be more recognition and more taken serious and when it comes to the lucha libre stuff yeah you know this goes back to who knows when, uh, you know, in wrestling, in WWE, I should say, mm-hmm. that, I don't know, it, it seems like Lucha Libre is looked down upon, or it's, to me, again, yeah, uh, my opinion, 
Uh, it, it, it almost feels like it's looked down upon in WWE. And they don't have that rank other than Rey Mysterio, right? Um, not having higher up ranks. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's just uh, it's a shame. Uh, I I would like how Lucha House Party to do more. You know, they're very talented guys. Individual, Lince Dorado. You know, Calisto, awesome. You know, awesome wrestlers. Yeah. Um, and Malik. Grand Metal League, my goodness, you know, awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, El Legado del Fantasma, you know, all these, uh, you know, Lucha Libre guys, you know, woo, great, yeah. great, great talent. And, you know, hopefully um, their time, more time comes to them. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, definitely. I mean, they should get that recognition at least getting the tag team titles. So, there you go. Yeah, Lucha, Lucha. Kalisto, I don't know if they haven't used him as a late day. I haven't seen him. Hmm. Um, I'm hoping that he's not in 205. You know, I have I don't really watch 205, uh, which I should. But by the way, ladies and gentlemen, it's pretty d- difficult. We cover as much as we can. There's so many promotions that we can watch. It's just yeah, we can't be like Poppy Seltzer, spending the whole day watching 24 hours and then critique and you know talk shit about it. He doesn't high praise anything, but nothing but. His young bucks and, and his Kenny Omega. That's what he. That's what he cares about. But yeah, I, I don't want to get involved with that. But yeah, moving on. But yes, uh, Steamboat the water right here. <laughs> Fuck so. Yeah, but yeah, go ahead, Mister Steamboat. Do you feel the same way? Do you agree with Mike and I? Lucha Libre style. They get to they get to work their magic when, especially when they go up against each other. You know, I think the one fact about Lucha Libre that L- Lucha Libre that stays in my mind is the very fact that. Wrestling, the whole rolling thing comes from wrestling and boxing rings and the fact that the boxing rings are a lot harder than wrestling rings. Yeah. Like It's like wrestling on a pile of bricks or something like that. <laughs> That's why instead of bumping, they roll. So, you know, I mean, getting to work their magic with that. Although I heard the the, the rolling is like the bread and potatoes of it all. Definitely. Um, I agree. It just I'm hoping one day the future does come for them. And like how we talked about it, I believe, in the... Uh, Last uh, episode, we did talk about uh, maybe an NXT Mexico that does happen, and all like so now. Uh, hopefully, they get that exposure and like how NXT India is gonna get theirs. So let's just hope for the best, and hopefully they do get it. And we do hope uh, NXT Canada, which you know we're here in the circle debate. We're pretty. We're supporting our our very good brother, and that is the Black the Black Dynamite. Wow. Jeremy Prophet. Jeremy Prophet, the Prophet. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because he deserves to be this individual. Jer- people, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who Jeremy Prophet is, research him. He's uh, uh, an incredible athlete. Been in a been in the business for over fifteen years plus. Uh, we just had him on our show, you know, previously. This man needs to be signed. So we're here right now. We're here saying that he needs to be signed. So whoever's watching this, you know, any promotion, any independent promotion is watching this. You need to get Jeremy Prophet on your show. Sign this individual. Someone needs to pick him up because this man is incredible. He is a, the greatest promo talker, great in the ring, outside the ring, overall, all the above, everything what you want to expect. Research his matches. He has incredible matches. And I'm serious to support him all yeah. the way. And I'm hoping that NXT does, should consider that of starting an NXT Canada and make that. And more exposure. Make I'm it boom. This. Yeah, make it boom. And make him your number one. That's what I would do. Yeah, great talent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Definitely. All right. And we're going to move on to the, that's when we saw the Edge and Finn Bala and mm-hmm. Big Dunn segment. I never had that, though. I'm like, whoo! Could that be it? I know we, we mentioned a part one earlier, but, you know, Matt already decided he wants to see Finn. But we want to see Kerry and Cross. You know, mm. what about carrying cross in it? He could chum, he could he come in, in like a sidewinder just into that picture out of nowhere. Kicks and kicks and flips, you know. Or give me a fucking four fatal four way Pete Dunn, Finn Balor, Karen Cross, and Edge. There Why we not? go. I, I'm I'm okay with that. What I a can't... what a way for Edge to make his his you know return to the young fast style. Like the edge I remember, the intercontinental champion edge. You know. I want to see Christian in NXT though. That too. Well, him him. And, I think him and Gargano will be fucking great. I think that will. I will love that. 
I don't so know. So much magic. Oh Christian's one of the best workers they say that ever was. And not you know, only he, that, he's just, got this handshake. He does this thing. Yeah. But just the promo talks themselves, though. I think about the storyline, how they're able to go at it with each other will be a great segment with Christian as well. Money Mike, how do you feel the same? What do you talk talk to me, baby? I want I want okay. to know. All right. So um I really I don't know, maybe I'm I'm just I, I don't have faith in WWE here that I don't think anything is gonna come from this. I don't think so. Yes, we got Edge to show up in NXT and talk to some guys. I don't think anything is going to happen. Okay, sure, maybe a tag team match uh, or, you know, like a Fatal 4 right? But more than that, no. I don't think I do, I do. I'm not expecting anything more than that because they've done this to us. They've, they've, they've teased <laughs> us. They've teased us and they've taken things away from us so Thank many you. times. That Preach it. At this point, I'm, you know, the boy cried wolf too many times already. To the, <laughs> I don't believe you, WWE. I don't believe you. No. So I'm not falling for your tricks again. There's a, there's, <laughs> there's a new show in town that is making things happen. Kenta just showed up. He's already announced for a match. He, it's already set in stone that he's going to perform. Edge just, I don't know. I maybe love Edge, maybe know? we'll get a Edge and Christian in a helico- helicopter tag team match. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, man? But yeah, that that's what I got. That's all I got to say about that. Oh, uh, because you know why? Or scum. A E. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike, just you hear that WWE? Mike, Mike, money, Mike, just force gum to you. Money, Mike, just transition busting a bird hard going to to AEW. Yes. He's pretty much given the you know the bird to WWE as of right now. Like oh sure. like, for sure. Just just like this man. That's right. That's right. Force so, gumping. Force gumping. Hey gumping. It better be ice cold for Stone Cold. I'll tell you oh, that. There you, you go. You damn right. hmm That is right. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Let's move on with um I want to move on with the Karrion Cross situation with um, Santos Escobar. We did see Santos, Kurt Stallion. We did see that. Great, you know. It was like a – I love Stallion because of his, you know, his independent work. Uh, it just sucks the way how this match was, like, very squashed, in my opinion. I mean, it didn't make it seem like it was too much of a back-and-forth match. Excuse me. And then we see uh, Karrion Cross coming out, you know, telling him off, and he might go after him. I'm like – I don't should okay. Here's my thing. If they make it okay, I know. I you know, you, you know what I want to say. He already uh, see that's why I love this man for a reason. <laughs> he knows me for over 10 years, so that's why he knows me. If carry okay, it could maybe. I know it I know it won't make sense, Mike. I know you you know you know I'm going with this. He's is a carry cross. Like I said, I said earlier that he could be like Thanos winning all the belts. He can win the Cruiserweight. He can win the North American and has the NXT. 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> Even a 24-7 <laughs> title. Just think about Karrion Cross having all those belts in NXT. I mean, it could, it could, the possibilities are endless. It could happen that way if you make, if you, how they're pushing Karrion Cross to be very, you know, strong. It's very strong and very, like, unstoppable, like a you know, like a movement of force, you know, like just have him being that guy, being that Thanos of NXT. I'm taking this belt. I'm taking that belt. Heck, give him the fucking NXT tag team titles. Have him all, all the belts. And who could go against him? That's how you, I could, I would book him to, if you, that's if you're making him look, which they are, in my opinion, you're making him look strong. Something like that maybe could be very intriguing. I know it's stupid, but it's, Intriguing. So, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong. How would you book Karrion Cross after seeing that segment? How would you do it, Mike? How would you do it? He is not a cruiserweight. <laughs> he is not a cruiserweight. How? are? Didn't Christian run a treadmill in a chicken suit just to drop down in weight to qualify for a title shot? 
Yes. And this mountain of a man is going to be challenging for the cruiserweight championship. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, you know, no, what? What is this? <laughs> and, and, oh, God. It, it, you know, no, I, it, I don't buy it. He, could he, could it be a cool match to have? Sure. Yeah. But not for the cruiserweight title. No, I, okay. I, I don't buy that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, you, do you feel? What about you, Mister Simo? Could he? Could they book him that way? It's like uh, you know when you talked about the Christian in a chicken suit. I was remembering like Matt Hardy. You know, trying. <laughs> oh, Matt Hardy. I think it was. The you know trying to <laughs> lose weight to be a cruiserweight. Yeah. You know, I mean the, those light heavy and cruiserweight titles nowadays are like you know main eventers. You know are competing for them. But then again, if you're a really big dude, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But carrying cross in a helicopter match. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> helicopter match. Oh my god, I hope not. Yeah, no, no helicopters or teleprompters or escalators and elevators. Oh my god. Now eating now and laters with Darth Ooh. Vader. And then we'll be like, see you later. <laughs> there you go alligator see you later <laughs> alligator <laughs> carrying cross crocodile cross yeah killer he, cross cause killer he, cross because he can killer floss because he can floss not not only just like the boss but yeah he could toss too <laughs> see this this is why people love listening to this podcast they so. come for the wrestling <laughs> stay for the rhymes exactly and now let's go to the main event oh, which is the undisputed era <laughs> <versus> <laughs> Versus Ciampa and, and Thatcher. That was a. I enjoyed that main event. I'm, I'm going to say this right now, man. Fuck that match. Who did not expect the way how the outcome of it, but I enjoyed the whole match itself. I'm glad that NXT is their own stable, and I'm glad that I know we, we had this debate before about yes, they should compete with you know AEW. As of right now. Just stick to what you're doing. Be your own brand, like how Ring of Honor is doing, MLW is doing. Who cares? Fuck the ratings. Who cares? You're, you're, you're doing something great, though, with these type of matches. And, and I love the fact that we're, there's a lot of things that we're able to watch. And I think this, for me, this match, to me, is an example of that. That, yeah, we, we wanted to see, the, you know, everybody was attentioning to the Omega and you know, the whole Mega and Moxie, you know, tag match main event for Dynam, I mean, for Beach Break. But this match itself was incredible back and forth. It was the beginning of it, it was the end of it. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Um, now I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen next week with NXT. Now I'm I'm intrigued. But I just want to say this right now because we had this debate earlier on the, on a Facebook with someone. No, David. <laughs> no, David is... You know, our sponsor here at Circle Debate, which is the Wrestling Guy Store. Uh, no, NXT is not the best. No. I'm just saying that I'm glad it is own product, but they're not better than AEW. And if you All use right. the women's division argument, that's about to change. Thanks to <laughs> thanks to a little friend of mine that calls herself the cutest in the world. So, <laughs> Money Mike, take the, the floor is yours. Your thoughts about this main event? Okay, let me address a certain wrestling guy. Yes, this goes out to you, Mr. David. Mr. David Gomez, the wrestling guy. I disagree that NXT is the best thing on Wednesday nights. No. While, yes, they have great talent and a stacked, stacked women's roster, AEW overall is the better show. So I'm going to have to disagree with you and actually open the door for you for whenever you want to have that debate because, believe me, AEW is whooping that ass of NXT. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, he, he, David. You got major yeah. leagues and you got and you got uh, developmental. <laughs> d developmental, you know. Yeah. I still wouldn't call it development. This is so yeah, bad. they still they still want to be, but they're not. No, Vince sees it that way because that's that's Vince's, you know, 
you know, Alzheimer's or whatever the fuck I mean, shit, whatever he has behind is that's just him. Oh, that pal, this is my developmental. CM, ah! CM Punk versus Edge in a helicopter match. Oh my god, I don't even. <laughs> I do not want to see that. But uh, yeah, Mr. Timo, you saw the main event. How did you feel about the NXT main event? How did you feel about it? Yeah, the, um. <sighs> I got. I gotta say, um, the UE, you know, undisputed era. They're they're really always coming out in full force. You know, it's like, you know, I, I'm wondering what, like what Adam Cole thinks sitting in the room watching his friends on the other channel. Yeah. It's like, you know, bi big fish in small ponds. You know, it's yeah. it's. But they were they were working their magic. You know, I think I think if I wanted to match them head to head, Finn Balor and at, more Finn, Finn Balor and 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 uh, Adam. And Adam Cole moments, you know. I mean, like, I, I get what you I get your point, but I feel like Adam Cole made the right decision of what he him going to NXT. To mm -hmm. so be honest with you, like, he's the what, big fish there. He, that's he's the backbone of, of NXT. Like, honestly, it's like I'll give you an example. Jay Lethal is the backbone of Ring of Honor. You know, he just recently resigned with Ring of Honor, and he's just the backbone for them. He's like the main attraction. Adam Cole is the same. Adam Cole mm -hmm. and the rest of the UE, you know, adding Kyle O'Reilly. You see how they focus on him, Reno you know, versus Finn. They gave him an opportunity. There was no heel turn. You see, and I love that. I, that's the one thing I love about NXT. But no, David, they're not the best wrestling show every <laughs> week. They're not. But I'm saying I love I love that product, but it doesn't mean that they're the best. No. Um, they're the best in their own ways. But yes, um, but yeah, see how they did Kyle O'Reilly. They focused on him. Roger Strong when he had his singles, you know, when he had his run for the North American title. I you know, I love that. See shit like that it intrigues me. And I'm glad that I think Triple H is the one Paul Levec is the one holding them. Like, no, Vince, you're not taking you're not taking my babies. You're not taking you you, you know, you away from me. They're my backbone of NXT. I think they might create something new. They might create all new concepts just you know, for UE to mess with. Yeah, not only that. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Isn't that the the ultimate goal, though, of being in NXT is to go to the main roster? Agreed. But you, I'd rather have UE be exposed to a crowd compared to right now when we're in this pandemic. And I felt the same with, Pun with uh, Punishing Martinez, Damian Priest, when he made his debut on Raw. I was really mad about that because I'm like, this is going to bury this fucker. I mean, I look what happened with Retribution. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, Mia. We can Mia. Go. Oh. Mia. Poor, like, uh, we, do we got to, like, what, what are we going to do with Mia Yim now? <laughs> Let her be. Let her be me. I am like yeah. But bring her back. Let her be herself. It's like that me. never happened. That never. That wasn't no. me. I'm yeah, like well, that, that was yeah. some other girl wearing a wearing a blue wig. Exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like you know, it sucks. And, and um, I'm glad. What I get your point that you yeah you want to go ahead and go to the main roster. As of right now, I wouldn't. Not what you eat. I will keep them. And where it is at. not developmental at all anymore. No, it's not developmental. It's their own brand. So they wish I, it was, but it's not. In, Vince in, Vince's, in Vince's head. Yeah. But no, I'm saying that UE should not go anywhere. They should stay. And until the right time is right, then take them to the main roster. I think it's where the main crowd is when they should. I don't think right now, like, I felt bad for Keith, Mia, all the retribution, which I'm mad about. T-bone steak, mashed and potatoes. T-bar or whatever. Boiled like, egg. Um, boil, cabbage. Boiled egg. Ca ca <laughs> what the fuck is cabbage? Fucking <laughs> <Like> vegetable <laughs> juice. Man. Carrots. Who the hell is cabbage? Beef stew. Would that be your wrestling name, Matt? Cabbage? I don't know. There's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you, you might as well have a, you might as well have a I, I bet you I bet you two cents there's going to be a wrestling faction called a uh, hometown buffet or something like that oh <laughs> my god it matches home, <laughs> hometown I would, buffet I, I wouldn't mind being two cents richer I'll tell you that <laughs> WW, let me tell you, the new deadliest faction here on Raw is Hometown Buffet. <laughs> hometown Buffet is going to take every title, especially baked chicken wings over here. 
<laughs> and and baked salmon and all you could eat green beans. You know? Circle oh. debate, everybody. Circle debate. They, you see, Here we are. They, ladies and gentlemen, this is who we are. We we always sometimes go out of topic, and we love it because we would like to make it fun. It's not about just being serious all the time. But I was just and saying how it. silly it, it can yet. You know, it was like well, yeah. I don't think retribution is as silly as it's going to get. It's going to get. I'm pretty sure it's going to get sillier. I like. I hope I, not, but oh, I think it will. <laughs> it's getting there already, and I'm like, I like. I already they need to break that fucking faction up. Yeah. Uh, hometown buffet that's, they, that's they, the next they, faction they, they need to make Dio Madden I wouldn't mind making a deal Dio Madden and Dijakovic uh, like I, I want a tag team close to like a APA but wait what's gonna happen with slap nuts <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about slap nuts what's gonna happen there uh, no where's slap nuts no, make make him his own, um, or I don't know, or then them, or them three being a trio, and then that'd be fine. Just keep Mustafa Ali, Mia Yim on her own in the women's division. Yeah, I'm happy with that. You know, what? I'll I'll say this one thing, one big thing about WWE as as a whole. So we see the New Japan partnership with AEW. I think the next big partnership for WWE to counter that is Chick Fil A. That's gonna be. It. Oh my god! Oh my I think they'll be because they 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 Popeyes, they behave man. very similarly. Popeyes. Hey, as long as they don't fuck with my Jollibees, bro. I'm hell no. <laughs> yeah. not, think, leave Jollibees alone. WWE. I think there's gonna be like like <laughs> so, a Chick Fil A sponsored tag team or you something. Can go to Popeyes churches. I don't. Care. No, no. W E no w is full of is full of conservative disappointments, like like Chick Fil A. So I think that's gonna happen. Of course, <laughs> I mean. They just got Victoria beer. They, they're not able to get Modelo beer. Yeah, oh that's, that's trip. You heard that ad? Freaking yeah. Rey Mysterio comes out. Comes like out Victoria you know, beer. It's, Victoria it's beer, so Victoria great. Victoria beer. All that, you know, like. Mexican <laughs> heritage. Victoria you know, beer. You know, a former world champion, and all you can talk about is Victoria beer. <laughs> I'm sorry. And that's like, I'll, that's I'll, that I'll, Victoria I'll, beer is Triple A's, like, big sponsor. Well, so. yeah. But now WWE has also this, but here in the States, though. It's yeah. different. Not it's very different. They don't have what we have, you know. They can't have El Segundo IPA, you know, broken Ooh. skull right there. They don't have that. They don't have the oh, good stuff. No, because I'll, I'll drink to that. Yep. Yeah, because Austin knows that that's his rights with the owners of El Segundo Brewery, and WWE can't do anything about it. And, and that's they, the bottom line. Cause Stone Cold sucks so. up. Oh, claim sports. <laughs> Bam. Remember that. I <laughs> remember, right. remember that. But definitely, yes. Um, before we end the show, one just one last topic of the night. Just want to go ahead. I know that we did talk about it part one, but it's just one more question that I still want to ask. Um, I just want to give you guys your feedback. I mean, well, every, everything what we saw today, I mean, what we saw the last, you know, 24 hours in professional wrestling. My last question to y'all is, like I we said, did mention earlier about having a super show. Now, I what dream matches are if you're the Booker, if you're Tony Khan, if you're with all these promotions, what but what matches would you book? If think about the roster of every promotion, and how would you book this? How would you book this super show if you had the opportunity? So I'm going to start off with Mr. Steamboat. How would you book this? How would you do the card overall? Of the of the big super show with AEW and New Japan and all that. Uh, how would you do it? How I think you already know my a few of my dream matches already. You know, one though. One. I already picked mine. All right. <laughs> I think I think obviously the big one everybody's kind of waiting for the end of the Golden Lovers storyline is Coda and Kenny. Everybody's kind of waiting for that. And I think the, there's going to be a slow build up to that, but that's got to be, that's probably most likely going to be the main event that everybody's kind of has their fingers crossed for. And if you want to go a either a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, you could even put Nick Aldis and Roosh in there if you want. You know, it could be a four way and see all the major promotion belts in one company. Because, you know, as long as Kenny's still holding that AAA belt, unless there's like another AAA champion. Or what other companies? But I think I think we're thinking all the major ones because CMLL doesn't have 
like their world heavyweight champion isn't really like the main focus because they're they're light heavyweight and all their other heavyweight belts get like just as much equal focus so they i i I don't i can't think of like their top guy but i guess roosh was kind of like somebody big in cmll no he was and you know they regret letting him go for that and even triple a regretted yeah w regretted letting him go too um I know Stephen Mill, I think it's, is it, um, shit, I don't know, is it that the new Mystical, or who is it that is the champ right now? Is it, um, I don't know who's the, who's, who's the champ right now of Stephen Mill. I don't know. I think, I think I talked about this before with you guys, because yeah. I have a, I have a really long card of main events, because I talked about in the Dream Matches episode, but... Yeah. I'll tell you where I want it to be. I'll give you guys the location and I'll probably want, I don't want, want to see this until after the pandemic's over after everybody's vaccinated, but the Indianapolis 500, which is the largest venue in, in North America, 200,000 people capacity. Great minds. Great think minds think of fucking like, I, yeah, you, you were thinking the same venue too, right? Of course. Well, yeah. but it, Go ahead. I'll let you finish. I'm yeah. already there. <laughs> Give me my ticket. Yeah. yeah, it's the largest capacity venue in the in the world in the free world because they. I mean, they had a larger event in North Korea, but you know, we're not going there. <laughs> no, we're not going. There. At least not now. <laughs> no, we're not going. There. And I think they're building something in China, but it's gonna take a minute to, <laughs> you know, the logistics <laughs> are going over there, but. As far as like, you know, United States and, and most of the Western world in Europe, you know, it's definitely bigger than anything. 200,000 people capacity. Maybe they should go for 150,000 in attendance for that big New Japan, AAA and AEW event. And you got to have like big, all the top stars from all the promotions for this event. They all got to come wait, out for wait. it. Is Bad Bunny going to be there? Oh yeah, and he's gonna be. He's no, gonna be I don't want him there. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, I'll give no. you, I'll give you, I'll give you how we're gonna do it. There's Bad Bunny, Bad Maddie, Bad Johnny. Like we're all gonna be hanging from. They're from, all bad. Yeah, we're all gonna be hanging from from ropes, and we're gonna be eating. We're gonna be eating hot dogs, and we're gonna be passing out. Uh, what do you call? We're got lifesavers to everybody. You know, he's not oh, going to be I, rapping, but he's going to be p giving out candy to all everybody dressed in a bunny outfit. I was kind of, I was kind of waiting because that's what he is. It'll be like Halloween. <laughs> yeah, it'll be on Halloween because you know, if you're if you are a bunny, you're going to be a candy bunny. You know, if you are, <laughs> if you are a bunny, that's what you're going to do. You know, like like yeah, Mike, he's going to be there, but he's not going to be rapping. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! You want Snoop Dogg there? He's, he's Snoop Dogg's gonna be Please. there with the other. He's gonna uh, be with both Snoop Dogs. You're gonna have Snoopy and Snoop Dogg there. Snoopy, I love Snoopy. Snoopy and yes. Snoop Dogg giving out choc to peanuts, peanuts gang chocolate peanut butter candy. You know, so, hey yo, you. I got the chocolate <laughs> peanut butter candy yo. But uh, as long so, as they're not doing steaks on the freeway, bro. <laughs> as long as they're not doing steaks on the freeway. So the big out some nuts and some steaks. What's up with that? What's up with that? I mean, back Shane. Company. We did see Shane Holmes at at, at, uh, at Royal Rumble. That's so what's up with I, that? I, you know, I have to say it. You know, because I, I am a fan of the Hurricane. You know, so. So, but yeah. as for that event, so like Coda and Kenny could like unless we see that event beforehand. But I won't. Me I won't stop mentioning this dream match: the Briscoes, the War Kings, Young Bucks, FTR. But maybe you could switch those two out with you could throw in Good Brothers and Motor City Machine Guns, okay, and, and FTR and and Young Bucks okay. TLC. Okay, there you All go. Right. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be the one everybody's gonna talk about too. For me, for me, just give me Cycle Clown versus Pretty Peter Avalon, mm. and I'm happy. <laughs> Peter's Damn. gonna. Peter's gonna work it. That's Peter's be, got. Um, oh, I'm oh sure he God. will. Yes, absolutely. I, I I would say this, and I and I, and I talked about this with my roommate, uh, like last yeah. night about it. We, I would like to see in that stadium where Matt said the in, 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 Indianapolis in, 500. Yep, have it in the. I will make a Mortal Kombat tournament style. Ooh, Inter wow. 
tournament style winner takes all the belts. Ooh, and that'll the be finals, insane. But who would you put in the finals? I really want to see in the finals. I know this is going to caught it, catch everyone off guard. But the fact that I respect this individual's work and what he's done throughout the years of his career, I would like to see Jay Lethal, Kenny Omega in the finals. Mm. That's something that I know. I know people are like, what? No, what not, no, that's actually perfect. Underground heroes. Because Lethal deserves it. Lethal mm-hmm. has, you know, Lethal has paid has paved the way for a lot of these talents. And I would include AJ Lee because he trained AJ Lee. And, you know, and they were dating at the time, but that's a whole different story. But, yeah, I know, right? You never thought about it. You didn't know that, huh? <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. So before, Jay Lethal, you... Interesting. Okay. Yeah. This is before she got with CM Punk. So, yeah. Right, right. But, yeah, she he, he helped train. You know, he trained AJ Lee to become what she's at. And he's done that with other talents. That's the Jay Lito is one person that is very underrated, should be more recognition of, of his work. That and then he's a loyal, he's a loyal person. And he had the opportunity to come to WWE, and I'm glad he did not do it. He made the right decision of staying where he was at because he doesn't want to relocate. I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here. And no, I'm not. They offered him a lot more money than what Ring of Honor is offering now. But he will have to relocate. He doesn't want to go through that. So that's why he stayed in Ring of Honor. And he and honestly, the faction that they have, I would love it. The foundation love that faction. If and him being in that tournament, that Mortal Kombat style tournament of all the belts, all the promotions. Okay, you lose. Okay, cool. The winner takes all. But who would you have to win? That's the biggest question. I don't know. I can't tell you because I have not seen it. I mean, I'm I'm trying to think about who could win, but it, the possibilities are unknown. Like once again, who could win that? So I don't know. Do you guys feel or who would you put? Would you do a Mortal Kombat tournament? Winner takes all the belts, all promotion belts. How would you do it? You tell me, Matt. You know, here's what I had in mind because, like, they talk about the G1, right? And yeah. how big of a tournament that is. Yeah. At first, I wanted to, because in Japan, they have this thing called, like, not, not a, like a pay per view called King of Pro Wrestling. And what I was thinking, at first, I was thinking, what's above a king? Emperor of Pro Wrestling. But every ever since uh, both Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi, everybody's calling them each the god of pro wrestling. So I think that would be like the biggest well that that would be the perfect name for both the pay-per-view and the tournament. Yeah. So the God of Pro Wrestling tournament. So would be would be the perfect thing. And maybe just do like a regular tournament instead of round robin. You know, you could do that and you know, there's all there the it could be anybody who's hot at the time. I know I want Jay White in that mix and MJF in that mix. I want some good heels in there just to to get that heat going. Yeah. You know, but... Um, <laughs> you had to put the background. I'm sorry. <laughs> you had to do it. The buffet. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. I love it. Mike, do you... So let's, let's end uh, it now. How do you feel about it? You know what? That's uh, That says it all right there. I'm <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in for episode 40, part two of it. Yes, I know it was a lot to cover. It just, that's what we do, and we'd love to cover as much as possible for you guys. Uh, we'll do the best that we can to short it as possible. But when, there's, when these type of events occur, we're, um, we apologize. The world has changed. The world, the world is wrestling. shifting. How, yeah. how, 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 many, how many people will say, there's God, God amongst insects. Like, God you know, amongst like, insects. Yeah, Don Callis. And this is, uh, he's a Callis guy. So yes, this has been going on. So I'm really happy that we were a part of this as pro wrestling fans. And uh, we can now wait what's going to happen later on. But yes, once again, we do thank you so much for tuning in for part two of it. And also don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms, on, you know, on, on IG, Twitter, also on Facebook as well, we have a, you know Facebook page that you're able to follow us, and also our social media audio platforms. You can follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podcast, 
as well. And we want to go ahead and thank everyone for tuning in for episode 40. Enjoy your rest of your afternoon. Excuse me. Yes, the beers are talking. Uh, but yes, uh, but I want to go ahead and thank everyone. Don't forget that uh, next week, episode 41, we will go ahead and discuss about the uh, <clears throat> the outcome of the new beginnings of what happened in New Japan because there's a lot of things that are going to be happening there. Also, with what happens there happens here now. Yeah, and then once we got next week, we're going to see uh, the performance of Shack Attack and Jay Cargill how their debuts are happening. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that. Don't What's laugh, that? Matt. Okay. <laughs> Let him laugh. I'm, I mean that that Shaq t- that Shaq NATO is it's like it's like a Judas effect with a punch in it. I um, <laughs> it's the I'm, Shaq NATO right here. Shaq, I don't know what he's gonna do. I'll, I'll let I'll let Shaq know to give you that uh, Shaq NATO watch. Yeah, I'll be dead. Yeah, <laughs> I, I won't even know. I won't, I won't. I just won't be alive. I'll be dead for two reasons. <laughs> And also, do not forget also next week for tune into episode 41. We will, once again, we will have our brother from another mother from the podcast world. That is George McKay from Straight Talk Wrestling. He will be joining us. We will discuss. Also, he will debate with us. And he's going to give us more intriguing news of MLW and more, you know, of his, of his content. So make sure that you follow him as well at, on his channel. So we would like to see you guys come, you know. So... Let's to knock it off because the beer's talking. Because we're going to be doing a lot more talking shop. And I don't want to do that anymore. So, <laughs> so I want to say thank you very much for tuning in for episode 40. Enjoy yourself. The big four hero. What go. a perfect episode 40 it's been, guys. Uh, you Absolutely. know what? I, I'm, I'm loving it, yes. And a lot of new things coming, but we're not going to say. you got to follow us on our social media. So stay tuned. Don't go to that buffet, though. (laughs) (laughs) Good night, everybody.